Welcome to Collecting Chaos. It's Freeform Friday. I thought today I'd show you some comics that I picked up yesterday. Uh, not all of them, because there's just way too many. Uh, but uh, we'll go through a short box fairly quickly. Uh, so you can see uh, some of what I picked up. These, these are my favorites. These are probably ones that I might keep. I may decide to sell some of them. I don't know yet. We'll figure it out when... Uh, Okay, we're going to start off with the first one. These are both in bags, but it's the same comic. I got two copies of Dennis the Menace number 30 from Pines Comics. I'm going to open one of them up. The other one I'm going to leave sealed for now. Uh, it's got a pretty bad water stain on it. I don't worry too much about that on these. It's from 1958, September 1958. So, nice. Silver Age Dennis the Menace there. Don't ask me why I'm putting them back in the bag. I don't know. Next, I have more Dennis the Menace. I have Dennis the Menace Around the Clock. It's from 1969. Dennis the Menace number 98. If I remember th correctly, this was uh, continued from the Pine series and Fawcett picked it up. It's from, uh, let's see what the year is on it. 1968. So yeah, that's that's what it would be. Uh, Dennis the Menace special number three, the best of Dennis the Menace. And the third large printing of Dennis in Hawaii. This is Dennis the Dennis the Menace large format number six. I have another one of these, and this was these were done by Halladane. <coughs> Next, we've got Archie number two hundred and thirty-nine, uh, and it's I mean these are rough. Archie three twenty-five, Betty number twenty. This says pretty bad water stain on it but you know I can I can flatten all of that out I can probably even remove the stain Josie and the Pussycats 83 it has tape on it that will come off fairly easily you've seen me do that before Jughead 283 laugh number 212 this is from the 60s I believe Laugh 320, Pep number 226, well that's a shame, eh, not, not something that's impossible for me to fix though, uh, that's from 1969, Pep number 232. Now we'll go to DC Comics. I got a fair number of DC Comics here. Starting with Adventure Comics number 396 and I just sold a copy of this. So that's kind of neat. Now I don't like that but there's nothing I can do about that. This is actually in better shape than the one I just sold. The one I just sold had a piece missing right here. This one might be better than the one I have in my collection. I'll have to check on that. All-Star Comics, number 63, with the Super Squad. This is from... The barcode tells me that this was published after 1976, because that's when they started putting barcodes on comics. There's a copy of Aquaman that's pretty badly water damaged, which is somewhat appropriate. Uh, number 14 from 1964. It's really in not that bad a shape except for those first couple of pages. There's, uh, there's two comics in here. I'm going to pull one of them out. 
This is a coverless copy of Batman number 131 from 1960. Uh, DC Comics Presents number one. Don't think I have that. Detective Comics 360. Now this is a shame because it's got burn marks. It does affect the story, I believe. Yeah. So this is this is definitely a poor copy, but uh, I might be able to use it for something. You know, if nothing else, I might be able to use the staples out of it for a period correct comic. Here's a, a copy of Detective Comics 512, Doom Patrol number 109. This is 80 page giant Jimmy Olsen. Uh, so it's 80 page giant number 13 from 1965. And uh, I don't have a copy of this in my collection. I only have like the first seven or eight Jim, uh, 80 page giants. That's one of those things I want to get all of them. Uh, Green Lantern number 165. I do not have that in my collection. GI War Tales number four. House of Mystery number 155, and I don't think I have that one either. Karate Kid number one, not to be confused with the movie. This is the Karate Kid from the Legion of Superheroes. Leave it to Binky number 26. This is from 1952. Technically, by today's standards, this is considered golden age. Showcase number 75 with the Hawk and the Dove. I think I have a copy of that. Uh, Showcase 95 with the new Doom Patrol. I don't have a copy of that. Adam Strange number 224. Well, actually, it's, it's Strange Adventures. Number 224. It does have some water damage and, and uh, some rust on the staple that has uh, migrated to the paper. I'll fix that up. Uh, Strange Adventures number 238. Superboy number 107 from 1963. This is a color, coverless copy. Superboy number 155. America Honda presents DC Comics Supergirl. I have maybe four or five of these now. I don't mind picking them up when I see them. Superman 198. I think I have that already. Superman's Girlfriend Lois Lane, number 67. I don't remember that cover. And Superman's Girlfriend, number 94. With a bad spine roll. And you know how I am about spine rolls. It also has some water damage. So I will probably remove the cover. And uh, try to get some of that water stain out of there. And if it doesn't, well, I'm not going to worry about it. It does have a rusted staple. I'll have to fix that up. Rusted staples, what I do is, is I just go over them with a Q-tip and some vinegar and it'll take most of the rust off. The worst comes to worst, I can use some fine sandpaper to get it off if I have to. Then I have a coverless copy of World's Finest number 99 from 1959. So that's the DC comics that I got in this box. And I went through last night and I sorted them out by publisher for the most part. So, next up, since we just did DC, I guess that makes Dell next. We have a four color number 468, which is Walt Disney's Goofy. Bad spine roll. It's a uh, semi detached centerfold. I don't think it's actually missing any pages, though. So, and then I got Oswald the Rabbit, which is a, a four color number 593. Ghost Stories. This is from 1972, and it has some water damage and some wrinkles, and it will have to be pressed out. Looney Tunes and Merry Melodies. 
This is number 159 from January 1955. See this black? I'm going to have to stick this in my ozone chamber because it's got a lot of that black stuff on it and that's not good. Marge's Little Lulu. This is from the 50s I think. January 1955. Little Lulu. This is January 1959 and it's saying still 10 cents. Dell was one of the first ones to go to 15 cents I believe. Marge's Tubby and this is number 37 from 1959 Mission Impossible. I'm going to take this out of the bag because some it had a sticker on it. Somebody pulled the sticker off and it's sticking to the comics and I don't want that. Ooh, nice white pages from this is number 5 from 1969 uh, Walt Disney Scamp uh, 1959. The reason I know that is it's got the copyright date right there. TV Funnies. Walter Lance's TV Funnies uh, from January 1959. And I'm pretty lenient with stuff from the 50s and 60s, so this chunk out of it I don't worry about too much. Walt Disney's Comics and Stories. It has some discolored staples need to be fixed up. Uh, 1955. That's number 180. This is number 172 from 1955. And this is number 193. So this would be 1955 also. So nice Disney stuff there. What's next? Harvey Comics is next. I have a Friendly Ghost Casper, number 147. Pretty bad water damage, but that's fixable. Or, or the, I can press out the wrinkles anyway. Uh, 1970. Sad Sack and the Sarge, a really bad spine roll, but that does not surprise me. Uh, I've had to take spine rolls almost off of almost every Sad Sack comic I've ever owned. Uh, 1967, number 62. Uh, Sad Sack's Funny Friends featuring the General, number 74. This is from 1969. Sad Sack USA, number 1. This is from the 70s, I can tell because it's got a 20 cent price sticker. Sad Sad Sack World, number 23. This is from 1969. Tough Coast starring Spooky, number 20 from 1966. Now we'll move on to Charlton. Uh, the camera did decide to quit on me and I had to pick up where I left off. Uh, got War, World at War number uh, 11. This is from January 1979. Army War Heroes uh, from January 1969. Now the reason I know it's from January 1969 this is a very small number up here 504-169. The one is January the 69 is the year. Uh, Our Fighting Forces in Action Attack. This is number 8 from November, say November 1972. And if I check the indicia, of course it says November 1972. So maybe you learned something just now. Uh, Our Fighting Forces in Action Attack, number 13. This one is in really nice shape. Yeah, white pages and the whole nine yards. It's uh, If I were grading comics, I would consider grading this one. Uh, September 1973. Uh, the Fightin' Five. Now this doesn't have those numbers on it, so to get the date on this one, you actually have to look inside of it. Uh, so that's uh, 1964. But you can tell it's from the mid-60s because of the, the uh, cover price of 12 cents. Uh, October 1964. Uh, strange uh, suspense stories also from the middle 60s. Uh, 
1965. Uh, all new Fighting Marines. January of 76, either 76 slash CDC, 76 is the year. It's number 127. Here's a Beetle Bailey from November 1972, number 94. Fighting Marines, number 85. This is from May of 1969. Haunted uh, from October 1974. Mysteries of Unexplored Worlds. Again, the 12 cents tells me it's from the 60s. Look in here from May of 1964. So, I'll just put that under there. And here's Space Adventures featuring Captain Adam. This is before DC bought the rights to the Charlton characters. So, this is August 1976 one of the early barcode uh, and uh, 1978 number 125 of Billy the Kid and I have some other Billy the Kid comics also so that's a nice welcome edition Let's see what's next I think it's Whitman nope KK uh, <laughs> top comics uh, the little monsters and this is I think number one yeah Top Comics, The Little Monsters, number one, published by KK Publications. KK Publications was a division of Western Publishing, who also published Gold Key and Whitman. And Dell for a while. Top Comics, Walter Lance, Woody Woodpecker. Uh, this is number three by KK Publications. And Top Comics, and these are all reprints. Uh, num the Flintstones, number three. Uh, like I said, they're all reprints of Gold Key stories. And speaking of Whitman, you know what? We're just going to pull out all of these. These are the Whitman and the Gold Key. Uh, this is uh, Grimm's Ghost. This should be January or, or November of, of 1972. I'm not going to swear to that, but let's take a look I'm probably off on that one number 57 it doesn't have a date so I have to look uh, no this was uh, October 1981 I believe yeah that would make sense 50 cents yeah let me just leave that out of the Tono and, jo Tono and Kono, the Jungle Twins. So Whitman, probably a reprint. Most of the Whitman stuff was reprints of earlier stuff. Uh, 1974. Tweedy and Sylvester. Uh, number 53 from 1976. Porky Pig. This has tape on it. I'll have to remove that. Has a lot of tape on it. I'll have to. If I decide to do anything with it, I'll be working on this one for a while. Yosemite Sam. Walt Disney's Comics and Stories number. The. Uh, I'd have to figure it out. But it's a Whitman. And chances are it, it was in a three pack anyway. So. Makes some of these a little more rare. Number 131, Uncle Scrooge, 1976. See, with Walt Disney's comics and stories in the Indicia, it has uh, volume 36, number 11. But if I look here, it's actually number 431. So, there you go. That's what number that is. Now we'll go to Gold Key. The Twilight Zone. This is 1964. Number nine. Nice to get that. Uh, Disney and Donald barcode. That means what? 1976 or, or later. This is actually from the 80s, I think. Uh, 
uh, March 1978 so yeah yeah this is done a little bit different uh, the way they did this was the last number was the or the last two numbers were the month and the first month was the first was the last digit of the year so that would make this a 78 uh, September 1978 which is what it says so uh, this is uh, September 1971 December 1975 maybe yeah August 1976 beware the bog a lurker stalks the swamp yeah so gold key had their own version of swamp thing and man thing and, and the heap it was their bog monster Here's Porky Pig from um, March of 1978. Yosemite Sam and Bugs Bunny from October 1979. It's a this is what I call title stripped. It's missing the, the upper part. And these were not supposed to be sold. They were supposed to be destroyed when that happened. This is... Uh, from August 1967 if you look at it please send notice to KK publications published by monthly by KK publications division of Western publishing company so gold key is part of KK so those go together uh, Star Trek this is from 1974 uh, Roadrunner from uh, 1984 maybe I don't know Nope, 79. My brain's not working again. Uh, 1979, Yosemite Sam and Bugs. 1979, Yosemite Sam and Bugs. Roadrunner from 1978. Star Trek from 1969. This is uh, December 1969. This is actually Star Trek number six. And not, I'm not saying be that because of that. I'm saying it because I looked at it last night and it was from 1976. See? or excuse me 1969 number 6 1969 then we have um, I think this is 66 no 60 no 64 um, but now here's the thing if it's a smaller comic it's from the late 70s or late 60s or on. If it's a bigger comic, it's older. It's, it's you know, probably 65 or, or back. Like this one. This one would be a, a, a newer one. But, of course, the 15 cent price tag, tag will give you that. This one is mid-60s, 1967, November 1967. Uh, again, you can tell... The price is 12 cents. Price has changed around 1968. Um, it does have a 7 there. It has the 11 afterwards. So November 1967. Magnus Robot Fighter 15. Uh, this is from 1968, I think. Yep, 1968. So that's all of the gold key and not too many more. Here's a American Comics Group, uh, Roman My Romantic Adventures. This is number 74. It's got a 10 cent price tag. What's that tell you? Early 60s at the latest, probably 50s. And sure enough, it's from 1956. Or actually, February 1957, but it was printed in 1956. Then I have Classics Illustrated. This is number 89, and uh, let me show you how to find out if it's a first print or not. You look at the back here, it says number, this goes up to 89, this is a first print. The other thing is, on some of them, at the end it would say what was going to be the next 
one that in the series but uh, yeah this is November 1951 first print glad to get that this is uh, number 24 if you look at the back it goes up to 166 so this definitely isn't <laughs> and and this is what they're talking about when they're talking about the the uh, the order number it goes up to 166 this is definitely not a first print probably a fifth or sixth print maybe even later it doesn't say it anywhere in there but you can get that information from uh, from the overstreet price guide uh, it, it's like this it says 1945 that's because they would just reprint them and reprint them and reprint them and the only thing that really changed was this the back advertisement which sometimes is on the back sometimes it'll be here sometimes it'll be in here you don't know where it's going to show up and from king i got popeye and personal service careers this was actually a giveaway uh, and it's from 1972 but this was a this was something free for people to learn different things or to you know go into careers. Girls' romances, ten cent price. It tells me it's at least a uh, nineteen sixty two or older. January January it's number thirty six. This is a, from nineteen fifty five fifty six. It's it's in rough shape. Uh, this is going to go into mylar and that's all uh, the publishing company for this I think is uh, signal publishing yeah yeah signal publishing it's one of those small publishers that didn't do a whole lot and we have the Walt Disney Media Corporation I think these were available uh, the this energy conservation and exploring energy uh, I'm thinking that these were also free uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, from Exxon. You, you got these from the Exxon uh, Corporation. Then I have... I have to open this. I haven't looked at it yet. Daring Adventures starring the Mighty Green Llama. This is number 17. And it's a 12 cent comic. And I don't see a copyright date on it. 1964. Of course, you got to love a comic book that starts out with advertising. But uh, glad to get this. It does have some um, some discoloration on the staple, and it has migrated to the comic itself. Possibly some rust. I'll have to clean that up. I will definitely be pressing this, trying to make it look nice. I'm glad to get that. I do. I've never had a green a comic with a green llama in it. And I got one Marvel comic, number 28, Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. I'm pretty sure I've already got a copy of that. It's from the late 70s. And this From Atlas Comics, which of course is the pre pre run, and of course this is the forerunner to uh, Marvel Comics. This is what Marvel Comics was before it became Marvel. It was published by Atlas. Uh, I'm probably not going to do anything to this. A beautiful Sid Shores cover. The colors are pop. They're really bright. I may clean it. I might not. Probably won't bother. Probably just take a cotton round to it, and that's it. Uh, I will, of course, straighten out all of these little folds on the edge of the on the corners of the paper and give it a press. Other than that, I don't think I'm going to do anything to it. Very happy to get this. I will look this up in the price guide and put its current market value. Consider it to be good condition. So that's uh, and you know it might actually. 
it might actually make it to to good to very good because it does it does have a lot of faults but it's not that bad and like i said it presents beautifully so uh there you go that's uh that's this box that's the whole box that i got um sorry if it took so long to go through it but it you know there's quite a few comics about a hundred or so um and i'll like i said i'll uh I'll look this up while I'm editing and add in the value of the Black Rider comic so you know how much it's worth. Probably going to keep it. Yeah, got about 99% chance I'm going to keep the Black Rider comic. So uh, that's it. Uh, we do appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you watched it all the way through to the end, I do appreciate that. Uh, give it a like if you liked it. Uh, share it with your friends. Subscribe. You know, all that stuff. Do a comment. And uh, did you see anything in there you liked? Let me know. I may might be willing to part with it. Probably not. But it's, you, it doesn't hurt for you to ask, right? Uh, make sure before you hand your comics, you take time to wash your hands. It's good for your comics. Good for your health. And we will see you tonight at the auction on Horizon Picks channel. You don't want to miss that. Bye.